Good evening, fellow scary people. It's your resident ooky spooky girly, Alexa, back today to talk about the unknown yet again. Oh, you want me to be specific? Okay. Okay, I suppose that's fair. Specifically then, I'd like to talk about planets, but lesser known ones that NASA wouldn't usually advertise. As someone who grew up during the declassification of Pluto as a planet, that left a mark on my psyche. Poor Pluto just wanted to be one of the cool kids, and we kicked it out after making it feel included. While it isn't on today's list, it'll always be an honorable mention in my book. Welcome to the top 5 mysterious planets NASA doesn't want you to know about. In 5th place, we have HD 189773b. Seeing as most of these planets today are only referred to with scientific labels to make my life easier, I've made the executive decision to give them nicknames. HD 189773b will now be referred to as Snow Globe, purely based on my personal need to see this environment captured in a globe. On October 6th of 2005, a team of astronomers announced the discovery of Snow Globe, which was detected using Doppler spectroscopy. Real-time radial velocity measurements detected the Residuary McLaughlin effect caused by the planet passing in front of its star before photometric measurements confirmed that the planet was transiting. In 2006, a team led by Drake Deming announced detection of strong infrared thermal emission from the transiting exoplanet by measuring the flux decrement, or decrease of total light, during its prominent secondary eclipse. Which, for those of us who speak regular English, is when the planet passes behind the star. Well, that was a lot easier. The mass of the planet is estimated to be 16% larger than Jupiter's, with the planet completing an orbit around its host star every 2.2 days in an orbital speed of 120 52.5 kilometers per second. Wild. In 2008, a team of astrophysicists appeared to have detected and monitored the planet's visible light using polarimetry, and the result was confirmed and refined by the same team in 2011. They found that the planet Albedo is significantly larger in blue light compared to in red, most probably due to Rayleigh scattering and molecular absorption in the red. The blue color of the planet was confirmed in 2013, which would have made Snow Globe the first planet to have its overall color determined by two different techniques. These measures measurements in polarized light have since been disputed by two separate teams using more sensitive polarimeters, with the upper limits of the polarimetric signal provided therein. Okay, bear with my pronunciation of the big words, folks. I'm doing my very best here. Your girl is perpetually exhausted. The blueness of the planet may be the result of Rayleigh scattering, which I mentioned before. On July 11th of 2007, a team led by Giovanna Tinetti published the results of their observations using the Spitzer Space Telescope, concluding that there is solid evidence for significant amounts of water vapor in the planet's atmosphere. Follow-up observations made using the Hubble Space Telescope, one a very popular telescope, confirmed the presence of water vapor, neutral oxygen, and also the organic compound methane. Later, very large telescope observations also detected the presence of carbon monoxide on the day side of the planet. Kinda dangerous. It is currently unknown how the methane originated, as the planet's high 700 degrees Celsius temperature should cause the water and methane to react, replacing the atmosphere with that uh, scary carbon monoxide. Personally, I get irritable when the weather reaches like the 20s here on Earth, so I know I would not survive that oven at all. Nevertheless, the presence of roughly 0.004% of water vapor fraction by volume in the atmosphere of snow globe was confirmed with high resolution emission spectra taken in 2021. I'm sure after all that fascinating information, someone out there is asking, but Alexa, why wouldn't NASA want us to know about this one? What? What's scary about it? The weather on Snow Globe is deadly. The winds, made up of silicate particles, blow up to 8,700 kilometers per hour. And observations have found evidence that it rains molten glass horizontally. See, I'm trying to, you know, imagine sideways glass raining down, and I'm drawing a bunch of scary blanks. Personally speaking, that sounds cool to watch from a very safe distance. Ergo the nickname, but uh, not up close anytime soon. I don't need glass shards on my side. In fourth place, we have the darkest exoplanet known to date. TRES-2b was discovered on August 21st, 2006 by the Transatlantic Exoplanet Survey by detecting the transit of the planet across its parent star. The discovery was confirmed by the WM Keck Observatory on September 8th of 2006 by measuring the radial velocity of the star that hosts TRES-2b. Okay, already, nickname time. I'm thinking midnight. The planet was identified in 2011 as the darkest known exoplanet, reflecting less than 1% of any light that hits it, and it is located 750 light years away from the solar system. I'm talking like 
worse than charcoal or the Vanta Black 3.0 paint in terms of reflection on the surface of midnight. The planet's mass and radius indicate that it is a gas planet with a bulk composition similar to that of Jupiter. Unlike Jupiter, but similar to many planets detected around other stars, midnight is located very close to its star and belongs to the class of planets known as hot Jupiters. This system was within the field view of the Kepler spacecraft. This planet continues to be studied by other projects and the parameters are continuously improving. A 2007 study improved stellar and planetary parameters. A 2008 study concluded concluded that the TRES-2 system is a binary star system. Now this significantly affects the values for the stellar and the planetary parameters. No one really knows why the planet is so dark. One reason could be that an absence of reflective clouds, such as those which make Jupiter so bright due to midnight's proximity to its parent star and the consequent high temperature. Another reason could be the presence in the atmosphere of light absorbing chemicals such as vaporized sodium, potassium, or titanium oxide. What do you think? Let me know down in those comments. In third place, time to explore WASP-12. I'm sure you folks get the drill by now. Hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm sure you can see the steam pouring out of the top of my head right now. I've got it. Firefly. And no, that's not intentionally a reference to one of my favorite shows, but take it how you will. Firefly is a hot Jupiter. Ooh, that sounds familiar. And was discovered on April 1st, 2008 by the Super Wasp Planetary Transit Survey. Yeah, many folks originally thought it was a joke, but I assure you, it isn't. Hot Jupiters, or hot Saturns, are a class of gas giant exoplanets that are inferred to be physically similar to Jupiter, but that have very short orbital periods. The close proximity to their stars and high surface atmosphere temperatures resulted in their informal name, hot Jupiters. Firefly is the hottest planet ever found at a sizzling 2,250 degrees Celsius, as hot as some stars. Now this find could challenge models of how close planets can be to their host stars. Firefly takes only a little over one Earth day to orbit its star, in contrast to you know the 365.25 days for the Earth to orbit the Sun. Consequently, it has one of the lowest densities for exoplanets, which is inflated by the flux of energy from the star. On December 3rd of 2013, scientists working with the Hubble Space Telescope reported detecting water in the atmosphere of the exoplanet. In December 2017, researchers working on the HST announced that Firefly reflects just 6% of the light that shines on its surface. As a result, the exoplanet has been described as black as asphalt and pitch black. In second place, we have Police 667C. Let me know, by the way, if y'all are enjoying the fun little nicknames in the comments. It just makes it easier for my ADHD brain to know which is which if it's a fun name and not a mishmash of letters and numbers. For this beauty, I dub the Two-Faced. It resides a little over 23 light years away from here in the constellation Scorpius and was discovered in 2011 by American and European astronomers. Two-Faced is four times as massive as Earth and it's very close to its star, only less than half the distance that Mercury is from our sun. It takes 23 days and 14 hours for it to complete one orbit around its star. Because of this, you would think that, you know, this exoplanet is not able to host life because of its close proximity to its parent star. That's not the case here. Two face orbits around a red dwarf star, which is tiny compared to the sun. That means that the Earth and this exoplanet are at roughly the same relative spot in their star's habitable zone. There's just one teeny tiny problem though. This exoplanet is tidal locked, which means it doesn't rotate on its axis. One side of the planet is always facing its star and the other always facing away. The side that is always facing the star is so scorchingly hot that it would be impossible to live there as it would melt you alive. Now the other side that's facing away is so cold that you would instantly freeze. However, what makes this planet possibly able to support human life in the future is the narrow strip of land halfway between its hot and cold side that is just the perfect temperature to support life. But like imagine stumbling home one night, you know, you're totally out of it, so tired, but and you lose your balance and that's it. Either you freeze or you burn. It's a bit extreme. I'll stick with Earth. Finally, in our first place, we have Planet Nine. Out of everything I've listed today, this is probably what's most likely to land me on some sort of watch list. Hey NASA, if y'all actually released the info you hoard on, you know, aliens coming to Earth and what you've discovered, people wouldn't demand it as much. Planet Nine is the ninth planet in the outer region of the solar system. Sorry Pluto, I promise I'll make it up to you. Its gravitational effects could explain the peculiar clustering of orbits for a group of extreme trans-Neptunian objects that orbit the sun at distances averaging more than 200 
150 times that of Earth, these Etnos tend to make their closest approaches to the Sun in one sector, and their orbits are similarly tilted. These alignments suggest that this undiscovered planet may be shepherding the orbits of the most distant known solar system objects. Based on earlier considerations, this super Earth-sized planet would have a predicted mass of 5 to 10 times that of the Earth, and an elongated orbit 400 to 800 times as far from the Sun as the Earth. The orbit estimation was refined somewhat in 2021, but the mathematical equation is just its too much for my brain to comprehend today. Constantin Badigan and Michael E. Brown suggested that Planet 9 may be the core of a giant planet that was ejected from its original orbit by Jupiter during the genesis of the solar system, while others proposed that the planet was captured from another star, was once a rogue planet, or that it formed on a distant orbit and was pulled into an eccentric orbit by a passing star. Lots of fun theories to look through. Although sky surveys such as Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer and Pan stars did not detect Planet 9, they have not ruled out the existence of a Neptune diameter object in the outer solar system. The ability of these past sky surveys to detect Planet 9 was dependent on its location and characteristic. Further surveys of the remaining regions are ongoing now, using NEOWISE and the 8 meter Subaru telescope. And that brings us to the end of today's list, and motivation to dig up my telescope and uh, take up an astronomy class. Genuinely, I'm definitely a little more fascinated in the great unknown now. Growing up, I knew like a few constellations. Cassiopeia will always be my favorite, but I didn't know we actually discovered planets outside of the main nine. Yes, I did say main nine. If you haven't figured it out by now, Pluto will always be a planet in my book. NASA really is all powerful. Who knows what else they're hiding that I haven't even been able to think of? What did you folks think about these wacky planets? Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more content from your resident night owl here at Top 5 Scary Videos.